What is going on guys, Bisectatron here, back with another video. Good to be sharing some more attacks with you guys. What are we taking a look at? We got some Town Hall 14 attacks. Want to show um, some of these attacks that are working against these pretty common symmetrical type bases um, that we're seeing in a lot of these just kind of random wars. I'm sure as you guys are gonna get into your uh, monthly clan war leagues, you're seeing a lot of these types of bases uh, might have some isolated stuff in the middle, uh, typically symmetrical, maybe some bait town halls like this one. How do you attack it? Going to be breaking down some different strategies and showing what's working against these common type bases. Not necessarily your you know, top of the line anti three star league bases that you're seeing in that high level play, but definitely a common base you got to know how to take out. Um, so this first one came in from the side here against these town hall bait bases where the town hall is kind of on the outside like that. Um, you don't typically want to go straight at the town hall, but often you don't want to also go opposite the town hall. It's best to do kind of a side entry. Now the uh, defender here, the base builder, is putting a lot of these high hit point buildings, a lot of the traps, all, all that stuff, clan castle, town hall, um, on that you know bait side. So there's not a lot of resistance to a dragon push from the side because all those high hit point trash buildings and all that junk is over by the town hall. So what this is really going to do for you is your dragon's going to get pretty far, uh, be able to take out um, a lot very quickly because there's not a lot on the other you know flanks of the base. Then you come in with the bat spells to kind of do more of a surgical attack towards the end um, to clean up the rest and of course the blimp to target the town hall specifically. So that's a good way to break down this base, uh, come at it with dragons from the kind of low hit point side of the base. You'll get the best value from the dragons, which of course don't discriminate between defenses and or whatnot. So they're very sensitive to like storages, stuff like that. Hold them up. So you want to come opposite that, um, then use the bats, use the the blimp to be a little bit more surgical, take out those key parts of the base. Um, that was a quick attack though, like two minutes, very quick. Um, taking a look at this next attack here, we have um, pretty cool stuff. This is the uh, flame flinger being showcased once again. I'm sure you know you guys have seen this strategy all around, using it to grab the town hall. Has to commit quite a few loons, but definitely worth it because you're gonna see here, um, takes out those kind of outer defenses. This is why you wanna have that like expo or something with a ton of range, guarding your town hall very closely. Because um, if you don't, this is gonna happen. You're gonna have the flame flinger uh, just sit there and snipe your town hall. So of course brings that earthquake uh, that's going to be important for uh, activating the town hall so it lights up like a defense and gets targeted by the, the flinger. Um, opposite side, queen is down. Nice uh, little super minion there for the, the funnel. And uh, the wall breaks open everything up. Queen's coming in, going to get the eagle. So eagle, town hall, I mean, you know, very consistently those are the two buildings that you, uh, you got to be aware of their high hit point they're d big damage dealers if you can get those down you're already about 50 percent of the way to taking down the base um so as this is developing you know it takes a while for this flinger to get the town hall down for sure so you got to have other stuff developing i would have even liked to have seen um and eh, i don't know there's some good the archer towers are kind of guarding the outside of this base so hard to really have a whole lot else developing um, but you're going to have to move quick as that town hall gets close to being down. So king has dropped down to kind of help clear out some trash on that side. Queen's engaged the CC. She'll get, get rid of that kind of time sink CC. Nice freeze on the single inferno there. Just making sure it's uh, not going to be able to take out the queen. Make her use her ability or anything. Hybrid comes in. And this is about as narrow pathing as you could hope for with the hybrid. Almost too narrow where it's a little bit inefficient. But um, that's kind of what you were looking for is uh, two, three buildings wide. Um, everything's nice and tight as it goes through the base. Uh, you know, really not a whole lot of resistance. Maybe there's that scatter shot in the back end, but the Warden's Tome is going to cover quite a bit of this. Uh, plus, it has all those heal spells. Uh, still has the Royal Champ's ability, still has the Queen's ability. Took really good care of the Queen. and even has one more Super Wall Breaker. Gotta love how that's planned. You know, that, you know, maybe it's not planned, but has that Super Wall Breaker for whatever the contingency is. Opens it up. Now, granted, the Queen's not going to be targeting that single Inferno right away there. Uh, so it looks like it does lock onto her, and I believe it will take her out. But, you know, so much is still left up. The hybrid went so well. And you kind of get those healers still hanging out. Um, you know, going to heal that hog up a little bit. So uh, not always lost there. And, of course, the Rail Champion is often what's going to be cleaning up these bases towards the end. Has the King as well, a couple of the pets. And that's, uh, that's a wrap for this one. So very nice attack. 
Another good thing to look for is, you know, those key buildings, Town Hall, Eagle. Um, try to take out those early. On to base number six here. I uh, want to show this one, another nice hybrid type attack. A little bit of a different format. Once again, the queen charge going with it. And uh, this is little, one of those little tricky wall segments. Got to be a little careful. Um, it's definitely meant so that the queen will not be able to walk in and target the inferno. But the wall breaker AI is such that you can kind of get away with opening up uh, a little chunk of the wall towards the top here. So I like the Yeti, help with the funnel, also get some of those Yeti mites on the defenses here and there. Um, gonna have to burn a freeze, of course, for that uh, single inferno there to make sure it doesn't light up on the queen. I would have liked to have seen, so that's a good rage, I would have liked to have seen right about now a headhunter coming in to help take down the king. Would have been kind of nice, you know, lessen the damage. Of course, the queen has the rage, so she's okay. But also, you know, help deal some damage to the defensive king. You know, maybe wasn't trying to lure out the CC, you know, in two different parts or something. So I can see maybe a reason why not to. But um, that's typically something I would look to do in my attacks. Yeti mites come out and actually get that archer tower down, which was kind of cool. And that, that actually is important later on that that archer tower went down. You'll see it's going to make sure the queen paths in towards the town hall. Um, seems like, you know, Town Hall 14 right now, you have a ton of time to work with. Just because once you deploy all your stuff, there's a lot down. And it can clean up that base really quickly. Um, so, surprisingly, you have more time often than you think to work with at Town Hall 14. Now, here comes the CC troops, another time sink CC. You have the Lava Hound and the Ice Golem. Poison Rage, the Queen will blow through it. And then, typical King Siege Barracks on the other side. And then just coming in with this overwhelming hybrid. Uh, you can see this one's a little bit different in that it's you know kind of a narrow berth at first, but it's going to widen out very quickly. Uh, so it's important that the uh, the queen gets in there and gets the town hall down to at least shore up that flank. And luckily, like I said, that key archer tower is down, so the queen goes through the wall, takes out the town hall just before the uh, the hybrid would kind of otherwise converge in that area. Most of the force though was off to the side, which is totally fine because the queen. Still up, still has a couple freezes, still has her ability. Um, you gotta, you know, decide in these attacks sometimes you can invest more spell wise in your queen or in your hybrid because you can bring heals or you could bring, you know, more freezes and rages for the queen. And that's kind of the case here. Of course, the freeze is also nice for like the scatter shot, stuff like that. But in general, I think it's good to use that Warden's Tome early. That's what he did and uh, has that last heal to kind of get some very good value there. Almost everything is in that heal. And of course, freeze on the Inferno. At this point, it's just a little bit extra. Still has the um, Royal Champ's ability. Nice little cleanup headhunter on the side. Why not? And uh, Sneaky Goblins has the whole game coming through. Nice three-star. We'll take a look at one more, and then we will wrap this thing up. But first, guys, I have to give a quick shout-out to my creator code. Be sure to go into your settings, more settings. Enter that creator code BISECT, B-I-S-E-C-T. Um, hit enter and uh, it'll help support me. So I really appreciate it, especially as you go about um, any in-game purchases, whether it's the gold pass or whatever. Um, it helps out creators like myself if you enter the code and uh, keep supporting the channel. So appreciate it. Okay, that being said, our last attack going down here. Number 11, um, this one, another variation, a little bit of the, the air style we saw towards the beginning. I think the air attacks, specifically dragon base attacks, whether it's the super dragons or the regular dragons, and then the hybrid are two of the main go-to attacks I'm seeing in these wars um, that are working really well against these pretty common bases. So in this case, um, coming in with the super dragons, some balloons, some dragon riders, very diverse air force coming through. And uh, what I like here is queen walk on one side, or not queen walk, sorry, just the queen herself, with the uh, healing pony on her. Uh, but the main force coming up, and you're gonna see good good place here to drop down the blimp with the wizards in it. Uh, so drops down the, uh, let's see, a clone spell, I believe, and some invisibility spells. Really gonna give an extra punch to those super wizards, because they're within the range of the town hall, two of the inferno towers. Um, I think there's some headhunters in there that are doing some damage to the expo or something so there's a little bit of everything in there um sorry not, not headhunters those are super archers which surprisingly were do pretty darn effective because they could have that insane range they got quite a bit of secondhand damage on the uh 
uh, scatter shot. So I think there's a bit of a combo of all kinds of cool stuff in there between some super wizards. Um, maybe it was all super archers. Okay, I have to look at that closer. Maybe you guys can rewind the video. Let me know in the comments exactly what was in that blimp because it looks like it was some kind of cool parade of different troops that had some range to them. And that was the perfect place to drop it, you know, right? Kind of in the middle of everything with the, with the invisibility spells, taking out the town hall, inferno towers all over the place. And then of course, um, has the heroes, which is often the case, kind of wrapping around the base to finish things off. You're never gonna have a perfect, you know, funnel into the base. And that's, that's actually a good thing because you want some of your troops to kind of Go to the outside, let your queen heal up a little bit, and then come back and engage these last few defenses. And that was the case here. Would have liked to have seen a couple cleanup troops, maybe a, a sneaky goblin or two, or if they didn't have any super troop capacity, maybe some regular goblins or whatnot, some wizards. But overall, very nice attack and uh, happy to bring that one to you guys. That will do it today for the video. Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoy my content, consider supporting the channel by entering my creator boost code, BISECT, in the settings tab of your game, and keep in mind it occasionally resets and must be re-entered. Click or tap for another video and be sure to subscribe. See you all next time, Bisectatron out.